Tak, dobrý den. Hello, everybody. I really like to see you here, and uh, I'm really glad to welcome you uh, on the last but not least presentation. Uh, the last presentation is from Gwili Davies, and I really like to welcome uh, him. So, no waiting, and he can start. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello. Dobry den, dami a panave. This is probably the first time I have done a lecture just straight in English without a translator for four years. So if there are big gaps between my sentences, it's because I'm thinking, because I'm so used to having a translator. Also, this is a little bit of Demarzi uh, Pratze housework, right? Um, yeah, my, my Czech is becoming slow, but Duolingo has just started Czech, so it's like advancing quickly in the last couple of months. This is too small for me when I stood at the back. Normally, I just do some slides for fun, but this time, because it's a little bit complicated with numbers, the slides are very useful. So I will try and explain things a little bit uh, more than normal. But if at the back you can't see, then um, just say something. Like, yep. OK. Or tell each other. And if, um, if this idea of me just speaking in English doesn't work, there's definitely a person here who can translate it for me. And we can change over to that format. Right. Tak. Um, we are going to look at everything that is a little bit confusing about the modern way of making espresso. There is also many people in the audience that know this. So it's slightly worrying me what they will ask. Um, hopefully it will make it clear to the people that do know. And I've taken the concepts a little bit further at the end to look at the strength of milk drinks. So if you know this, hang on. There might be a little bit at the end. Okay. Oh, I do it, I do it, yeah. Duck. We will talk doubles. I hate being served just a double espresso when I go into a cafe. But I like a single. It's lovely. It means I can have more coffee. But we, for this, it will be much easier if we just talk doubles. So when I say 20 grams, I mean 20 grams of coffee in the basket. These are some of the confusing things we're going to look at. They're all percentages. So somebody will say 10%, 20%, 50%. And it gets confusing as to what it means. So I'm going to explain the concept behind these. This is also called brew ratio. A ratio is not a percentage. So it's also this. It's history why we're confused, but maybe we'll go through it. So the purpose of the talk is to try and explain this. This is where it all starts. 20 grams is big to go inside a portafilter. I normally use 18, but 20 works better for the maths, so it's much easier. We're going to make a coffee today. We're all going to make an espresso, and this is the espresso we're going to make. 20 grams of ground coffee, 40 grams of the espresso. It's a double. 
and the time. If I'm doing 20, I could do 19.9 or 20.1. So that's what this is. It gives me a, a window, a space, to move from the recipe. Dose is very important. If you start changing dose, you change temperature, flow, resistance, headspace, things we don't really understand. So we keep that the same, if it fits. The drink size, plus or minus two grams. So 38 to 42 grams. There's a bit more movement. Time, much more movement, two seconds. So if it's 27 seconds, that would be 25 or 29. So we're not gonna bother about time. Oops, it's gone. No, it's gone. Misha, <laughs> help me. <laughs> Come on. Uh, we're not going to worry about time. So from that recipe, the only two things that are going to be important for this talk is 20 grams or 40 grams. Right. In, yeah. 20 grams is the dose. 40 grams is the weight of the drink. What I'm not going to do during this talk, because um, it will get too confusing, is explain why. And I'm not going to explain what, why it is useful, either. Um, what I wasn't going to say is why we even bother to weigh espresso. But because we can't see the next slide, I think I will tell you. We weigh the dose for obvious reasons, whether it's 7 grams or 20 grams. If you change that, you change everything. We weigh the cup. We weigh the cup. Uh, or the liquid in the cup. Because if you are just looking at the volume, so you're using milliliters, it is just your eyes. If it's a very fresh coffee, it looks big. If it's a not so fresh coffee, it looks small because the crema changes. Also, when a liquid sits in a cup, it's not straight. It's actually like this. I don't know why. Misha does. It's like this. and. Uh, so when you're looking at it, it's difficult to know whether it's 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 milliliters. But when you look at some uh, weighing scales, you know exactly what the number is. So it's very specific. Also, it's really weird to measure grams in, like the coffee grinds in, the dose, and then in uh, milliliters out. It's a different measurement. It's much easier to measure in the same way, so grams and grams. Dak. Okay. While he's doing that, both the people who know what I'm talking about and the others, does it make sense so far? So, yeah, those who know about brew ratios, and it, it makes sense, yeah? And those who don't, it's okay, you're following the idea? Okay, it all starts with the recipe. From the recipe, we weigh the amount of coffee going in, and then the liquid coming out. From that, we can work everything else out. So clever. <laughs> oh. I, I feel less stressed now he's leaving. 
He's from Casino Mocha. He's very quiet, but when he does talk, it's like, it makes me shake. Okay. I was going to do a talk at the Prague Bar Show, um, but um, they didn't like the title. One of the sponsors didn't like the title, so I changed it to uh, Myths, Myths in Coffee. So if this goes again, we'll just change the talk and we'll start talking about Myths in Coffee. Like one is, um, one big one is, Everybody says it's the second most traded commodity in the world. It's not. It's like the 120th. It's the most ridiculous. And coffee dehydrates you. No, it doesn't. It's like 1% of it is coffee. The rest is water. What's, how does that dehydrate you? So anyway, if this fails, we will go to that one because I don't need slides. Back. So we're going to ignore time. We're just going to go with the top two. Dak. Yes. Strength, so TDS, <laughs> TDS, total dissolved solids. So this coffee got measured by this machine. Many people can do it with their taste and it's not, not as difficult as you think because there's a big difference between 9, 10, and 11% strength. This is 10% of dissolved coffee in the water. Strength is not the roast level, how dark it is. It's not the amount of caffeine in the cup. It's the amount of coffee that's dissolved in the water. That's what that is. So um, many espressos now are eight, but 10 is a you know, fairly okay espresso. Um, so this is what it means. <laughs> if you can see at the back, I will, I will say what things say. 10% um, TDS, what does it mean? If the drink is 40 grams. 10% of it is dissolved coffee. 90% of your espresso is water. So, I'm not very good at maths. This is why it's easy figures. 10% uh, of 40 grams is four grams. So inside that cup, this one, 10% is dissolved coffee, which means four grams of coffee is in there and the rest is water. Right, what does that mean? Who cares? Here. Ta da! So, espresso, normal espresso, 8 to 12% of that espresso is coffee, the rest is water. Ristretto is over 12%, Lungo below 8 and uh, filter coffee is down at like 1.3, so 1.2 to 1.5. I put the, the amount of water in here because uh, I can never remember. So uh, if the filter is 1.2% coffee, it's 98.8% water, and if it's one point for 5% coffee, it's 98.55 water. Is that right, Misha? Yeah, good. Ta -da. That's why we measure it. The strength makes a difference. And with numbers, we can actually say that is a ristretto, or it's a lungo, or it's an espresso, because it actually has a number. And an espresso at 11% is very different to espresso at 8.5%. It's very different experience to drinking. Duck. That was strength. So TDS is strength 
and it's given as a percentage. This is extraction. So, 20 grams coffee dose in the portafilter. We make coffee. From this coffee, we make a drink, espresso, that's 40 grams in weight. It's a double. 36 is water, four is dissolved coffee. Then we throw away 16 grams. It doesn't weigh 16 grams. Um, I have a, a barista at Proofrock. I have a tiny share of a cafe in London. And um, uh, the, I gave this to one of the baristas to look at. And she went, Gulim, it doesn't weigh 16 grams. And I go, it is 16 grams. She says, what about the water? So it's not, if you weigh it, it's not going to be 16 grams because it's also got the water in it. And I have a quick question for somebody. Um, how much water would one gram of coffee absorb about? Shut up. You're not allowed to answer. <laughs> just, not, just like an average. Yeah, two. So this this will probably be... It'll, a bit will disappear. So it'll probably be about 30 grams if you weigh it. So if you weigh it and go, Gwilym's wrong, it's like, yes, I am, but 16 grams of it will be coffee, the rest will be water. Yeah. So that's cleared up. So the point of this is to explain what extraction is. Extraction is when we take flavor from the coffee and put it in the drink. And this drink is flavored by four grams of coffee. So if we started at 20 grams and we have 16 left. Yeah? It's okay. Good. Isn't it so funny? There's an article in Standard. I'll talk quickly now because I have to rush. There's an article in Standard that says, this is coffee, this is coffee, but we never say that's coffee. He was like, it's brilliant, brilliant article. Okay, back to extraction. Looking at it another way. 20 gram dose, 40 grams, four grams, 36 grams of water, four grams of 20 is 20%. Ta-da! 20% of this coffee was extracted, 80% was thrown away. Most of that 80% is wood. Right. Why does it matter? So, how much we extract matters because how much we extract is linked directly to flavor. So, say, let me just check what the next one is. Okay, got it. Say we keep the dose the same, 20 grams. The amount we extract affects the flavor. If we only extract a little bit, it will extract much less. Uh, it will taste very different to if we extract a lot. I put some figures here. And they're roughly what we call high extraction and low extraction. So 28%, you're never going to extract anywhere near 28% from your coffee. Um, but anything under 18 is usually a bit lemony and sharp. So if, you're, if you go for a coffee and the barista tells you it's meant to taste like that, it's probably 17.5% and not actually... They just need to extract a little bit more. So how much we extract from the coffee makes a difference to the flavor. And these are the flavors. If you only extract a little bit from the coffee, this is what it's like. If you extract enough, it starts tasting good. 
But if you start ta uh, extracting too much, it's really weird. All the flavors disappear. Some beautiful flavors, they all disappear, and then it just tastes bitter and dry. I don't know where they go. I don't understand. Oh, I stole this as well. So this is, um, I didn't steal it. I made it better. So <laughs> Matt Perger made it, and then I made it better. And then, then I changed it into Czech, but I have to put at the bottom that it was his, really, originally, because it was. That. Right. I want to explain it again. So our dose is 20 grams, and we've locked it in. It's locked. It's staying the same. If the amount, if the weight of this espresso is only 34 grams, it will be here. And it will taste like lemon and fruit that is not ready to be picked, and maybe a bit dry, sharp. This one is beautiful, sweet. Juicy. This one is going dry and uh, bitter and losing some of the flavors. So the amount of here, we're using the amount of water to change the flavor. <laughs> this, <laughs> you, you won't be able to see it, even the front ones maybe. This is a, a sausage dog uh, unicorn <laughs> because there is a hidden part to this um, that it actually tastes okay. It's like, uh, horrible, 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 okay. <laughs> really bad, really bad, nice. Some people call it the second hump, but in English that sounds weird. So um, I prefer to put a... Uh, a unicorn sausage dog there. So it's like something that some people don't believe is there, but other people do. I will quickly talk to the, like, the people that know this. If you have a coffee that has a second hump, has this, um, it's very good because this can be your ristretto and this can be your espresso. You, you, no, long ago, you're just going to have to add a little bit of water without the customer seeing, but to make it taste good. Otherwise, if you just make a long go with, with this coffee, it's going to taste bitter and horrible. And if you make a ristretto, if this isn't there, it's just going to taste like lemon juice. Ta-da! Okay, right. A review. We have done recipe, dose, and the weight of the coffee. We have done strength, which is TDS, so the total amount of dissolved coffee solids in the drink. Then we did extraction, which is between 18 and 22, 21% for espresso. Now we're going to do brew ratio. It's a little bit confusing because there's two ways to do it. Brew ratio or espresso brew formula. This became popular because it's on the app by a guy called Vince who invented the refractometer and the VST baskets. He does it this way. He makes it into a percentage and in some ways, Matt Perger made this um, more popular because it's, it's very easy. We just do times two. So you take whatever amount you're going to use, you times it by two, and you, so it's 40. Or you could times it by 1.5 or 2.2. And it's much easier than saying percentages and trying to work out what that means. But if somebody says it's a brew ratio and says percentage, it's not worth arguing about. It's just the ah, so 20 grams dose, 20 gram coffee is times one or 100%. 20 
20 grams, 40 grams is times two, 50%, 20 grams in, 60 grams out is times two, times three. Yeah, thank you, good. Um, and 33%. If I say something wrong with figures, it's because I'm a barista, not a mathematician. I learned this because it really makes espresso easy. So much more simple than before. But I'm still not a mathematician, and please tell me if I say the wrong figures, because otherwise Misha tomorrow will go, hee 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 hee, you said the wrong thing. Because <laughs> she won't tell me now. So you're saving me. Oh, and this is a review of everything. So this is everything we've done so far. Dose, 20 grams. The es double espresso is 40 grams. We measured it with our mouth or with the little thing. And it was 10% strength in the cup. So 10% of 40 is four, four grams of coffee in there. So four grams taken away from 20 is a 20% extraction. If you're really clever and interested in things, you can now work out the caffeine level in your coffee or other things. But I'm not, but if you, yeah. Keep going, keep going. Right, this is the review. TDS percentage. You can use TDS for water as well, or many other things, wine. But here it's the dissolved coffee, and it's all about strength. So it's about the concentration. Whether you're having a gin and tonic with a lot of gin, or a little bit of gin. It changes the flavor completely. Extraction is the amount of coffee we've taken from the portafilter put into the coffee. So how much flavor we've taken. And the brew ratio is the relationship between the dose, which is the, the amount in the portafilter, and the amount of water we use in the final drink. So, strength is in the cup, extraction is taste, and it's from the coffee. Brew ratio is the relationship between the coffee and the amount of water, which affects the concentration and the taste. So that's why people talk about brew ratio, is because you know what you're going to get. Is it strong, or is it? Gentle and floral, or... Right. Quick breather. We're going well. We're nearly done. Um, questions? You can say it in Czech, and then somebody will translate it. If Okay. Too easy? Too complicated? I'm going to go more complicated. So there's people in the room know this. Um, the reason I've done this is because people get confused about what they are. And it's something that got developed to make espresso simple. And what seems to be happening now is that people are making espresso more complicated by using all these figures and percentages. And really, they're not that complicated at all. They're there to actually make things more easy for us. Right. We can use the same idea to work out the strength of our milk drinks. Why? Um, 
because it makes a big difference on your menu if you know the strength of the drinks. You, can, you actually have figures, numbers, instead of just saying, oh yeah, the flat white is strong and the latte is done. If you alter the espresso size, or if you alter the coffee you're putting in, you are gonna alter this. When we make filter, we don't worry so much. Uh, we, we, oh sorry, we worry more about the strength in the cup. But with milk drinks, we just throw the milk in and don't worry, really, about the strength. What is interesting is a lot of people who like their filter coffee at a certain strength, where it's like 1.4, 1.3, 1.2, they also like their milk drinks about the same uh, strength. Right, how do we do it? So, <laughs> we, we have to have the TDS and the espresso weight. So this is an espresso that's been split into a single. So it's 20 grams instead of 40. 10% of 20 grams is two grams. So there'll be two grams of coffee in my cappuccino. We times the weight of the espresso, 20, by the TDS. Yep, that's this. And then, the w I've done that wrong. The weight of the uh, the full drink, we divide the weight of the espresso into the full drink. So that's wrong. Oh no, it's not, because it's 10%. It's right. I have done this right. You can take photos. So basically, the amount of coffee that's in there, we divide into the weight of the full milk drink, and we come out with 1.33 which is like an average, so this is an average classic cappuccino, and that's an uh, average classic filter strength. They're both very similar. Right, I think that's it. Duck, yes, done, finished. What is the time? Oh, wow. That took much longer than I expected. Sorry. Wow. Um, give me a question. Yes, man right at the back who couldn't see any of the slides. Um, you can do it by taste because you will hit you can use the brew ratio and you can you can use taste because if you're making your espresso you know uh, da 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 Right. Tack. This changes depending on the coffee. So the weight. 
that comes out changes. Yep. If you do a times two, you will be very, very close to... No, I think, I think going for TDS, I think you're going to have to go the other way. Go for taste and then match it with TDS. I'm getting myself into trouble because <laughs> I'm thinking and doing. Um, but, so, I don't know. I think I will just get, I will just talk for ages. One thing you can do when you are calibrating the grinder, because there's a very strange thing that happens with time. The finer you go, the more you will extract until you reach a point where it starts to extract less. So if you are putting water through and it tastes nice, the, the strength here tastes nice, but you like the feeling in the mouth, but it's just too sharp, you can go finer with the grinder. And that may push you here. But if you go too fine, you'll actually go backwards. Because if you go too fine, it channels effectively. I haven't answered your question. I know that. But I would, I would go as sweet as you can with the grinder. And then as soon as everything starts getting dry, come back again. And that'll give you your maximum TDS at a sweet flavor. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that would be crazy. Or if you are really crazy, <laughs> what you could do is weigh the coffee, and then after you've finished with it, put it in the oven on a very, very low heat to get rid of all the water, and then you can weigh it. Because the problem with my, um, with this, was it had water in it. So the way to do it is to take water out of it by putting it in a really low temperature oven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or f go, yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> but, but don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. That's, that's why the, um, the refractometer was such a thing that changed espresso, is because that is what used, people used to do. They used to take them to scientific ovens and put their waste coffee into scientific ovens to work out the TDS yeah. and, and the extraction. Yeah. The water TDS things you can use, but they're not they're not very accurate. Another one? <laughs> yes. If you change your dose, it becomes really complicated. You should be able to calibrate your grinder in three. Three changes of grind for a, a new coffee. As soon as you start cha changing the dose, then it, it becomes multi-dimensional. There's many variables. One is small amounts. Small amounts, yes. Like 0 0.2, but if you 
put less coffee in, then the water coming down will brew hotter. If you put more coffee in, the water coming down will brew cooler in the first few seconds because the coffee takes heat. So the coffee is a heat sink. So the 90 degree water comes on 25 degree coffee and takes the temperature. So the more you have, the more it takes temperature. The, the pre this is complicated now. The pressure at the top is maybe nine bars. The pressure at the bottom is atmosphere. So one or zero. Um, if you change the amount of coffee, you change the distance between nine bars and zero because there's no pressure at the bottom, only atmosphere pressure, one bar. Then, <laughs> yeah. So this temp time will alter. The time it takes to go through your coffee affects the temperature of the extraction. So we've got the headspace the space between the top of the coffee and where the coffee, the water comes from changes, and that has influences that we don't understand. So, yeah, it just becomes really complicated. Yes, if you change your coffee, because the, gra uh, the roast size makes a difference to the amount. Usually darker roasts, you are putting less in. Light roasts, you put more. Um, because you need, you need to keep a certain space between the top of the coffee and where the water comes. Usually three to five, three to six millimeters. About the size of a small coin on the top of the coffee. It needs to expand, and if it cannot expand, then it traps against the shower screen and you will get channeling. Um, if your coffee is old, you will have less gas, so it will not expand as much. If it's very fresh, it will expand more. So with fresh coffee, I would put a little bit less in, old coffee, a little bit more in. Um, yeah, it's, I would change the dose, but I would never teach anybody to do it. <laughs> yes. I really, th yeah, um, I, t yeah, <laughs> Steph, you're filming this, aren't you? If you're, t okay, I'll have to, this is my thoughts, but not necessarily true until it's been proved so by um, Barista Hustle, which I'm sure they will do. Um, if you have a good distribution technique, you will, be better than the, the distribution tool. One of the problems with the distribution tool is when you put it on top of the coffee, you are pressing down certain parts of the coffee, but not the others. And so you get uneven extractions. The tapping on the side is much more effective than the OCD. Don't buy it. It's also an extra movement that you have to make, um, which is time. And it is gives you a strain on the wrist, because it's really heavy to do this. If you do this 200 times a day, you, you're, 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 this, this thing is not going to work. <laughs> so no, I, I would never do it, but... Um, if your technique is not very good and you have many different members of staff, 
then maybe it, at least you're bringing that average up. Uh, yeah, and their, their new tool looks interesting. Dangerous. I don't leave, leave, you can't leave that lying around on seats. It's um, basically it's uh, lots of nails, pins, things to stab you, all going down. Yeah, it's really interesting. I trust. Yeah, I trust them. Ready. That's in my uh, my Prague bar show talk. Um, it doesn't. The purpose of tamping is to reduce the density, yeah, to, to or increase the density. But it's really on the top. You cannot um, your tamping cannot affect the bottom. So uh, you really need to just um, make sure the water can sit on top of the coffee when it comes in and then it goes through evenly. There's been some re different research. Five kilos is the minimum that Socratic coffee say. Um, Illy don't give a figure, but they say light is really good, is fine. Um, and there was some Swiss research that said 10 kilos, but they never actually did nine, eight, seven. So um, I've been tamping about nine kilos for years ever since I was getting pain in, in this. And it's fine, tamping doesn't really, as long as it's level and flat. In fact, I, in the training center, um, we make everybody else use the tamper, but I actually use the puck press, which is the automatic tamper. Because I did a shift at Cafe Mat, and over three hours using the volumetrics, the automatic buttons on the GB5, the Puck press was better than me over three hours. O over one or two shots, I know we were, we were, I was just in the lead, but by the end of the three hours, I w yeah, it was better than me. I was going, Petra, Petra, these volumetric buttons on the GB5 are amazing. She was going, it's, <laughs> it's not the buttons, it's the puck press. Yeah, it's my tamping. The GB5 we had in the training center was never as good as this. No, no, it's your tamping. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it's, yeah, tamping is, it, the sooner it goes away, the better, to be honest. It's. Okay. Ready? Jedna, dwa, tri. Ta da uh -uh. Done. Thank you very much for everybody. Oh, sorry, man at the back. I'll <laughs> no, it, um, I never use 20. It's too much. Proofrock used 22 or 24, which is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, two shots. It's because they used to do doubles all the time, but then the rent got put up. The rent got doubled, so we had to move the the people faster. So we went to putting 24 grams in times two, and we were able to uh, just give singles instead of doubles, which made us much faster. And so now we can pay our rent. No, same. Same time. It depends on your machine, your grinder, your water, and your coffee. Um, pr with the same machine, grinder, coffee, I'm doing 24 seconds, 25 seconds. Proofrock in London are doing 35 because their water has no minerals in it. They are, they are part of the... London has a problem with the water, so they use the RO systems, which take everything out. And if you do not control your RO system, then you've, you suddenly you have no minerals in your water, the calcium, magnesium. And you need those to take out the coffee to extract. So they have to, 
35 seconds to make an espresso when I can do it in 25 seconds, just because I have more minerals in my water. Mine's better. <laughs> have you been to London? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> okay, now you have to come to the training center so for me to make you a coffee and see if how it compares. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's right, I have some red brick as well lying around, so I'm sure that will work. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, it depends on the taste, but really, I, if the the aim should not be to do the longest time possible, because Tim Wendelbo does it, it's because he has no minerals in his water because he lives in Oslo. The aim should be to make the coffee as quick as possible. So you can serve the customers quicker. And yeah. So it should be tasty, but quick. But which is one of the, the things Barista Hustle were talking about with their distribution tool, was if they can make coffee faster so they don't have to go finer. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>